Over the last 10 years, I've had the great opportunity to talk to thousands of coaches all across the world about their business and how they got where they are. And during those conversations, I typically ask them, what would you have done differently if you could start your career today? Or what advice do you have for a brand new coach? So in today's episode, we are gonna be talking about the top four things that we've pulled out of all of these conversations to help you grow your business. So if you are a brand new coach, this video is absolutely gonna rock your world. And even if you are a seasoned coach, I guarantee there's gonna be some things that you can pull out of it. My hope is that if you are brand new, you're gonna be able to implement these things and go from just basically starting, so you're at zero, all the way to six figures within your first year without burning out. So if you stick with me to the end, you're gonna have those top four keys plus a little action item to make sure that this isn't just hypothetical, but that you can put it into play. So with that, let's dive in. Yeah. All right, number one. When I ask coaches all across the world, what would they do differently? The number one thing that they say is that they would invest in mentorship. Effectively, it's like a cheat code. You wanna learn from those that have been there before. Often we all just kind of dive in and try to figure it out. But if you invest in mentorship, you're gonna be jumping so many levels and have the opportunity to just skip all the mistakes that we've all made throughout our career. But what I want you to focus on, this is where a lot of coaches and trainers make mistakes, is that they focus on technical mentorship. They're gonna go around and, and shadow different coaches and trainers to learn all the technical pieces. That's great. But what I would encourage you to do first and foremost is invest in mentorship that's gonna help you grow your business because it doesn't matter how much technical knowledge you have, if you can't package up that knowledge and sell it 24 seven, you don't have a business that's gonna work anyway, you're gonna burn out and you're gonna be moving on to some other career. So number one, again, invest in mentorship, but focus on business first, technical second. Coming in at number two would be to stop selling lessons or hopefully never sell them in the first place and rather focus on long-term development. In other words, we wanna help you stop selling your time and focus on selling that expertise and bundling it into subscription-based coaching. So when I look at the marketing pages for coaches and trainers, what I often see, sadly way more often than anything else, is them selling lessons or packages of lessons or training sessions. You could book 10 training sessions. It's just selling time, right? rather than focusing on selling results. That's the big shift that I want you to make here in any of your marketing efforts. Stop selling the units of time, sell the results. Help people understand that you can help them lose weight, run faster, jump higher, lower their scores, hit it further, whatever it might be, lean into that specific result and your business will thank you for it. And if you stop promoting all of these time exchanges, it's gonna be much clearer what you can do for that prospective customer. Coming in at number three is jumping on technology right away, but specifically technology that helps you manage your relationships and your communication. Far too often, coaches and trainers get enamored with the really cool hardware or the data tracking software that gives you all these vanity metrics, and that's great. It's kind of the icing on the cake, but if you can't communicate those results, all of that data back to your athletes in an effective way and manage that relationship, then your business is gonna fall apart no matter what. You're gonna burn out because you're trying to send all these messages to all these different places, and ultimately that athlete's not gonna get what they deserve, which is mostly understanding how much you care about them versus all of the data and things that you're trying to provide. So by investing in technology that'll help you manage those relationships, your retention is gonna be really, really strong. Retention in coaching and training businesses is the greatest challenge, but it's also the greatest opportunity. If you get really good at retaining clients, that means you're gonna spend less in advertising, less in marketing, you're gonna have happy customers that bring word of mouth, and your average value per customer is gonna go up, 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 which is something that we really want you to understand. And we've got a separate video about that exactly that you can check out right up here. Coming in at number four would be to niche out as soon as possible. So in other words, Find the things that helps you stand out from the crowd and really lean into it. I, like many other coaches, we discover our niche along the way, but it's kind of by accident. What I'm encouraging you to do, especially if you are newer into your career, is go into the career with the goal of finding that niche. How can you find that niche? Here is a simple formula that I think will help you get there. So first you wanna identify your ideal customer. Who do they look like? What jobs do they have? What goal orientations do they have? What finances do they have? Dive as deep as you can into who that person looks like. 
And then you're gonna add that to what your ideal day looks like. How many hours do you wanna be coaching? Where do you wanna be coaching? What kind of technology are you gonna be implementing in your business and so on? And then you wanna add that to whatever your unique skill set is. Again, what helps you stand out from the crowd? And what do you wanna to continue to invest your lifelong learning practice in as well so that you can become the best in this specific niche? Let's recap what we've talked about so far. So number one, invest in mentorship, but specifically business mentorship, technical mentorship. Second, number two, stop selling your time, AKA lessons, lean into long-term development, also known as subscription coaching. And on top of that, sell results versus again, units of time. Number three, adopt technology, but specifically around communication and relationship management first and foremost, and then you can bring in all the extra cool hardware and data and analysis services that you might wanna loop into your coaching. And number four, niche out as soon as possible. Make the goal as you're starting your career to find what helps you stand out. Instead of just being the coach that does that specific sport, I'm a golf coach, I'm a tennis coach, be something specific and your business will thrive. So as we're wrapping up here, let's talk about the action item. Again, we don't wanna give you all this information if you don't actually do anything with it. So no matter what stage of career that you're in today, I want you to take one of those four areas of focus, one of those four keys, and make a significant change within the next seven days. So pick one of the areas. It could be looking for a mentor. We can help you there. So that could be a significant change right away. You can adopt different technology. If you're not a Coach Now member today, that could be something that you do. If you're on the lesson treadmill right now and, and you've been following us for a while and this is the video that pushes you over, talk to one or two of your athletes and tell them, hey, I'm moving into long-term coaching, to subscription coaching. What do you think? Let's do it. And number four, if you feel like you're a little vague in the way that you're presenting your business, look at your Instagram bio, look at your website and try to be hyper-focused on your niche. These will be great opportunities that you can put into play over the next seven days.